Here's how the salt bridge works. At the beginning, you had the zinc and the copper pieces of metal connected up by the wires, and each piece of metal was in a solution containing its own ion. So zinc was in zinc 2 plus sulfate, and then copper was in copper 2 plus sulfate solution. When you had no salt bridge, the reading was zero volts, and then when you took the piece of paper towel and dipped it into the sodium nitrate, suddenly you got a voltage of 1.8 volts. So why on the left do we have no electron movement, but then on the right we do? There must be something that the salt bridge is doing to allow the electrons to move. So overall, what the salt bridge does is it helps to maintain everything being neutral within this overall setup. So here's how it works on the particle level. Here's a representation of the cell that you made with a piece of zinc on the left and a piece of copper on the right. And what's going on when we hook this up is the zinc is getting oxidized, so the zinc is turning into zinc 2+. Plus. Well, what happens over time is as zinc 2+, plus gets made, it floods into the solution. And on the left-hand side, what we end up with is a bunch of zinc 2 plus ions. Over on the right side, we have copper 2 plus gaining electrons and turning into copper. Now, when it does that, it leaves the solution. So it plates itself on the surface of the solid copper metal. So the piece of the copper is actually getting bigger. So these copper ions, which were originally there, are leaving. And what's left behind, there are more of these sulfate ions. So now on the right, what we have are a bunch of sulfate ions. So in these two beakers, what there is, is on the left side is positive, and on the right side it's negative. So that's what's happening overall. And the electrons, if the electrons are being lost here on this side and moving over to this side, the electrons, as they're negatively charged, are not going to go to, away from a location that's positive and into a location that's negative. There's just, they're just not going to do that, so there's no electron flow. What the salt bridge does is it helps to keep these charges balanced out. So what it does is this paper towel that was soaked with sodium nitrate has a positive ion and a negative ion in it. And what happens is on this side, if it's positive, what's going to happen is the negatively charged ion, the nitrate in this case, is going to move into this beaker right here. And then on this side, because this side's uh, negative, the positive sodium ion is going to move into that side, and it keeps everything electrically neutral. Once that happens, then the electrons are able to flow, and we get a voltage. So overall, what's happening is zinc turns into zinc 2+, plus, and it produces two electrons. Those electrons go up and across to the other side, where the copper 2+, plus in the solution, gets gained, turns into copper metal, mm -hmm. sticks itself to the surface of the copper right there, and that's what's happening overall. And all the, all the while, this um, salt bridge is helping to keep everything neutral. So there are two half reactions that are going on overall in this cell. We have the zinc getting oxidized. So we have zinc, solid, turning into aqueous, zinc 2 plus and two electrons. So this shows that the electrons are originally with the zinc and now they're not anymore. They're separate. They have a plus sign there. On the other side, where the uh, re uh, reduction is happening, um, on the copper side, the two electrons are getting gained. So two electrons plus copper two plus gives us copper solid. So on this side we have oxidation, and then on this side we have reduction happening. Okay, on to the next page. Um, there's a statement here that says the oxidation reduction reaction that occurred was spontaneous or non-spontaneous and the voltage reading was positive or negative. So this is going to establish the relationship between whether or not a reaction happens on its own and the corresponding voltage reading that we get. So we know from before that this reaction happens all on its own, so it is spontaneous. And we know from hooking it up to the lab quest that the voltage reading was positive. So that means that whenever you have a spontaneous reaction, the voltage reading is going to be positive. So we have terms that we assign to the place where oxidation and reduction happen. We have two electrodes here, so we're going to give names to these two electrodes right here. So the black wire was attached to the zinc metal. The zinc metal participated in oxidation. The red wire was attached to copper metal, and that participated in reduction. So the terms we have for these the location where oxidation happens is known as the anode, and the place where reduction happens is known as the cathode. 
So in your cell down here, the way you set it up, this piece of zinc, just the piece of zinc metal is the anode. And then the piece of copper metal is called the cathode. Now, we have a way to abbreviate this diagram right here. Rather than drawing every, all the containers and the pieces of metal and the salt bridge, we have a way of abbreviating this. So here's how we abbreviate our diagram in electrochemical cell. What we do is we put the anode all the way over on the left. So there's zinc, and we like to put the states and up matter in there. So there's the anode. Then we put a line. This means that there's a phase boundary, meaning there's a separation between two states of matter. So we have uh, solid and then we have aqueous. So the zinc solid is in contact with the aqueous zinc ion in solution. We like to specify the concentration. The way we represent the salt bridge is just with two parallel lines. I guess it kind of looks like a bridge, so that's how you can think of it. On the other side of the salt bridge, we have the copper 2 plus ions. Uh, aqueous and the concentration. Notice that we're not including the sulfate here. And the reason that we're not is because it's merely a spectator ion in the cell. It's not participating in this reaction overall, but it is there. It's just that we don't include the spectator ions in this uh, cell here. Finally, on the other side, we have a phase boundary and the cathode. So overall, the way this is diagrammed is anode all the way on the left, cathode all the way on the right, salt bridge goes in the middle, and then the, the ions in the solution go uh, in between these two spots right here. So that is how we diagram the cell. When we have a cell, the way that this is written, what's helpful to know is that the electrons get made here and they move over to the other side here. So the direction that the electrons flow in is from the anode side to the cathode side. So whenever you see a diagram like this, um, you can know that the direction that the electrons are going to move is going to start on the left and then move over to the right side. So anode, cathode.